Hello. Hello. Um, today I'm going to be doing a slight review on Journey to the End of the Night by Celine. Um, and I don't, I don't really know the best way to hold this book because if you notice, this book is way chunkier than most of the shit I read. So, um, so this is going to be one of those things. I'm, I'm going to try to go through it. And it's funny because like this book, um, that was originally released in 1932. Um, and I don't know if it's because of Celine's later in life statements or entanglements um, kind of along the same lines as Hampson shit like that where uh, their art is especially in today's climate or current year whatever um, their works are like tossed to the side because of who they were as a person shit like that but um, I, I'm already rambling and not going where I'm supposed to go. But um, I have tried to read this book a couple times. <clears throat> and, uh, like, over the last, probably since 2016, I think is when I got this. Um, and, uh... The thing with this book is, is that I think it starts off really dull. Um, like, you can see some of the, the <laughs> like, barely in it. Um, because the, a lot of times when you're dealing with very cynical writing, and dark humor and stuff like that. Um, you have to understand that that's who the character is before any of that stuff could like hit you and like sink in. <clears throat> but I basically said to myself, okay, I've had this book forever. I'm either going to fucking get rid of it or I'm going to fucking read it. And, um, so this weekend, I was like, I'm just going to fucking read it. And I thought I would be able to do it in just like a day or two. Um, and it took three. So uh, my my planning is as good as ever. But uh, I just kind of <clears throat> soldiered through it um, is the best way to put this, I guess. And once I got past, like, probably the first maybe five chapters, I, w I was in. I was like, okay, I could follow this guy. But for someone who writes as concise as Celine does in this book, I even felt it was long-winded. And, um... For those of you who know me, I really appreciate get to the fucking point. Like, if you have something to say, fucking say it. Like, um, I, kn I know what color leaves are on a tree. Like, fuck off. Just get to the fucking point. If you have something to say, say it. And I know that's probably not the best way to sit down and read a book, but that's who I am. And I can't fucking be somebody else to make booktube happy, okay? This is just who the fuck I am, and it's how I fucking read. Um, and, but this, this, like, this really dragged on in points. And, um, I almost understand that it dragged on for a reason. And it's kind of the whole thing where there's parts of this book that drag on, but it's to show you how fucking pointless and monotonous so many fucking things are. And 
like, <clears throat> if you, like, to me, like, if you're, like, going, shit, should I fucking read that book? Like, did you like Hunger by Hampson? Did you like um, Notes from Underground by Dost? Did you like um, The Stranger? Like, if you didn't like those books, and those books are tiny compared to this fucking thing, um, I would say stay the fuck away from this book if you really didn't like those books. <clears throat> but in reading those shorter works, if you connected with those characters, if you um, connected with like the theme of the book and you like almost saw yourself there, then definitely, definitely pick this up like for real. Um, there is so much to say about this. I think this is going to be kind of a longer video already. Um, I'm going to put this down because I'm supposed to be resting my hand. <clears throat> um, and that's a whole other fucking story. But anyway, um, I'm trying to think of, like, I, I did not know how to approach a review of this book. I, I just didn't. Um, because to me, like, this book feels like it could have been serialized. Um, it, it almost honestly feels like, like five little books, like, all put into one. Maybe even more than that, if I'm going to be honest. But <clears throat> it's like, <clears throat> um, where do I, oh, I, I've already lost my train of thought here. Shit. Um, if you notice, I haven't made a video in like a month because I'm doing the Poetic Anarchy class and I just, I don't have the... When I'm doing that, like, doing anything else is really difficult. So, um, I feel like I'm in a weird, like, Twilight Zone moment right now. But anyway, so I watched some videos of people who have reviewed this book. And, um, the craziest thing is, is that not many people have reviewed this book. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, and I think I mentioned that already. But the thing that's interesting is, um, like, there was, like, a review from, like, eight years ago, a review from six years ago, a review from two years ago, and then there was a six-month ago, and I think a two-week ago. And um, so given the spectrum of what our culture has done and become in those last eight years. Um, I think it's very interesting to see people talk about this book. And one thing I was like, kind of glad it didn't really seem to, um, because this book I think can really be like, like current year, modern day, like someone can look at it and really apply a lot of um, the, I don't want to say nihilism. I think that's kind of overdone. I don't know. I just, I think that there's a lot of correlations one can make. I'm not going to make them here because um, I feel like that's above my pay grade and um, I don't really want to get into all that shit. Cause like, I, like, I think a lot of people reading this book would go, fuck that book was really fucking depressing. But I think if you're one of those people who can like relate with the character or see yourself in the character, um, it doesn't, it's not that that's depressing. That's just like life. Like that's what life is. And so I think the people who read this book and really like, kind of gave it like a downward um, grading, let's say, are because those people are probably more optimistic fucking people. And the people who really fucking dug this book dug it because they 
feel like they could be that person. They feel like they are so fucking close to being what Ferdinand is in this book. So, to give you the briefest, I swear to God, I'm going to try to make this as brief as fucking possible, the briefest of all rundowns of this book. There's this dude, Ferdinand, he's in Paris, he sees the French troops marching through town, and in some sort of, like, little tiffed argument, whatever, with a buddy, he decides he's gonna join the French army uh, in World War I. And then gets in there and realizes, it's almost like watching, like, Arrested Development, like... <gasps> I've made a terrible mistake. Like, it's like that whole thing. And he kind of goes back and forth between, like, should I desert? Should I not? Should I just stay here? Is me standing right here and not going anywhere else desertion? If I went that way, would that be desertion? It's like, um... There is a lot of, I don't know, I think the thing that hit me the most and almost brought me to tears um, in the beginning of this book, and I think, and I mean, it's not technically the beginning of the book, but it's like in the first, like, episode of the book. I don't know another way to say it. <clears throat> and I'm going to share this with you. Because, like, it's not necessarily spoilery, but, like, Jesus Christ, the book's, like, old as dirt. Like, who fucking gives a shit, right? So, um, they were, like, some of the French were shooting at the Germans, and the Germans were shooting at the French. Both were on horses and all this other shit. And, um, they shot some Germans off the horses, and then once the gunshot stopped, the German horse just kind of galloped over to the French horses and started making friends with the French horses very, very easily. And the French horses and the German horses were just hanging out. And he saw that and um, it kind of like freaked him out, not freaked him out, but it, like what I got from that was like, okay, so that's a German horse. And that's a French horse. And they're completely fine. Like, they don't have any problems. Like, why can't we be like the horses? What What do the horses have in their head that is greater than what we have in our head to, like, be able to set aside whatever differences they may have and just fucking be horses together? And I feel like that's kind of the, not the only underlying thing in this book, but um, kind of the <clears throat> underlying thing in fucking modern society right now. Like, the, the comparison the just I don't know man it just it it shook me and um I think seeing that and realizing that the horses have this whole thing planned out way better than we do like they got this shit figured out like why are we so stupid like I don't know like that just um it kind of shook me, and then the whole rest of the book is just showing you how fucking stupid humans are. Like, you could take a lot of fucking things out of this book. Like, you could go, oh, it's about nihilism, it's about fucking um, a bromance, you know, it's about uh, how war changes you. Like, you, you could fucking say, like, all sorts of shit about what this book's about, but at the end of the day, I think it's just about, like, fucking humans are fucking dumb. They're fucking stupid. And patriotism and tribalism and all the other isms 
um, just make everything worse um, on a global scale. Because he goes all over the place. So he's in France. He ends up leaving France um, and going to the uh, colonial Africa and getting into some shit there and then realizing, like, oh, shit, like, no, 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 no. And so he ends up in America and then um, America is just a very, very ugly place to him and he thought it was going to be so just amazing compared to France and um, so Manhattan is no good so he goes to Detroit and ends up getting a job on the assembly line and um, so this is his comment on capitalistic America and all this other shit and um, see the thing is like <sighs> When a lot of people talk about this shit, they're going to say he was commenting on the horrors of capitalism. Okay. If that's what you want to say, that is, that's fine. I took it more as just being some dude's bitch is a fucking horrible existence. And, um, like there's this part where he's like, you know, I was studying to be a doctor to the people that he was like interviewing with at Ford. And they're like, okay, um, don't think anymore. We're going to think for you. And you'll probably be better off if you just keep your fucking mouth shut. And he's like, oh, well, I was glad they told me that because, like, I could have gotten into lots of trouble if I kept running my mouth and all this shit. But um, just becoming a cog in a system, even though, like, there's this weird part in the back of my head that's like, I would rather be the guy that puts this bolt in this hole for eight hours a day than I would be having to fucking work retail. Jesus Christ. Last thing I want to do is hear some fucking meh, 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 meh. So anyway. Um, and then like he uh, starts dating this hooker and like just falls in love with her and she like falls in love with him and he's like more shocked that she has fallen for him than anything. And so we have this thing where like, he doesn't come out and say this, but it's like this thing where, well, there's something must be wrong with her if she thinks I'm great. Like, like I know I'm a piece of shit. Like, what, what the fuck is up with her if she thinks my shit don't stink? <clears throat> and so you have all that shit. And then, like, he, so he doesn't go to work for like, I can't remember how long they said, I think it was like three weeks and go to work. And then he like shows back up. He's like, okay, I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to like, you know, get my cart and do my thing. And then some guy comes up and he's like, oh shit. Hey, yeah, they already um, got a machine to replace you. So like your job's gone. I told you like you never call in sick or nothing because if you're not here, they're going to get a machine to replace you. And, um, but it's just the soul crushing, um, vampiric, fucking soul sucking monster that is, um, the workforce. I don't know another way of describing it. <clears throat> it was just too much for him. And so, like, he, even though, like, Molly, the prostitute in Detroit, she loves him and is so fucking good to him, um, she's also banging all these dudes at night at the brothel. And it's funny because that's never brought up in a derogatory way. 
Like he never says anything horrible to her for that. And when he describes the things going on um, with her or the brothel, um, he never talks about that except um, the only like thing that was like, eh. I mean, it's not eh, but like whatever. When he's leaving her, he doesn't want to leave. And um, they're like at the train station and they're saying their goodbyes. And it's this like heartfelt moment. And then he sees a couple dudes walking by that like recognized her and like, oh, and that's it. Like, that's the only like um, weirdness. And I don't know if that is a um, stab on how self absorbed Celine or Ferdinand is because it's kind of semi autobiographical. Um, but then it's great too. Cause there's this bit after he leaves Detroit, he says he never heard from her again. And if she reads this, I hope she knows that I will always love her as best as I can. And if she ever wants to come to me in Paris, I'm here and all this other shit. So it's like, I feel like he really, really loved her deeply. Um, so that was just kind of sad, but then like, so he goes back to Paris and then it's like, and then in six years I got my, um, medical degree and I'm like, so like, did we just, did we just go six years in the future? Like in like a paragraph, like, is this desperate housewives? What the fuck's happening right now? So anyway, <clears throat> And, um, then there's a bunch of other shit. And, um, I think one of the things about this that shows who he is, is that, or at least who Ferdinand is, is that he's, um, a doctor in this, like, little... I don't want to say, I mean, I guess it's a suburb, but it sounds a lot trashier. I don't know if a French suburb is more trashy than an American suburb, but, um, he's helping all these people who are too poor to, um, pay their bill, like the 20 francs they owe them for whatever. And, um, He's like, well, you know, I'm going to help him because I'm going to help him, but fucking assholes aren't going to pay me, but I'll help him. And so it's like, he has this total disdain for everybody, which is hysterical because he's a doctor and being a doctor, like what's the Hippocratic oath or whatever it is, like, I'm going to help everybody, no matter if they're assholes or not. Um, but, like, he has no problem, like, going, yeah, the bitch, the asshole, this fucking guy. Um, so it's like this, but it, but it never feels like he's doing it begrudgingly. Like, it never, it, like, honestly, like, he probably wants to help. But, like, in the back of his head, every time he's like, they're not going to pay me. Oh, maybe I could get 100 francs out of this. Oh, nope, that dude died. Well, there's that shit. Motherfucker. And um, that whole thing. And um, so that's the basic. And then he ends up in an asylum. Not as a patient, but as a doctor in an asylum. <sighs> now, as I tell you all this... You're sitting there going, okay, but what's the plot of this book? Like, this guy just, like, travels? Is this, like, a travel log? Like, what's happening? Like, it doesn't seem like there's anything to this book. And um, it does feel like that. The thing that makes it not feel like that is when the character Robinson comes in. And Robinson is this guy that he met um, in the war and then ran into again in Africa and then ran into again in America and then ran into a bunch when he went back to Paris and um, they schemed some shit together 
and um, his feelings for Robinson go from wondering if he's okay to never wanting to see him again to let me help this guy out to this stupid motherfucker get the fuck away from me and um and it even alludes to robinson being one of molly's johns the prostitute in detroit like they talk about her for a minute and i was like whoa dude don't you know that our man here was in love with that chick? And you're like, you need to calm the fuck down, mister. But, um, and I don't know if his whole thing with women is based on misogyny or based on him being so fucking self-absorbed that he can't for a moment think of anyone but himself you know what i'm saying because like he does it with robinson and he does it with his mother and he does it with um and like there's this bit when he's in manhattan and he's talking about um lola's mother and lola is kind of a reoccurring character in this too and um he fucking says some fucking shit that is like, what the fuck are you saying that for, dude? And, um, there's just like, it's, it's almost like he is a, just an observer. So you get that same kind of feel you get from the stranger. Um, the Camus stranger and then things just kind of happen around him and he ends up in the shit because of it or in whatever and then like when it actually comes time for him to like when someone's like what do you want like what do you want with your life what do you and he's like shit fuck I don't know like I, I want something different. Like whenever like someone poses the question to him, he's like, Oh, I should probably leave then. Like I should probably go to the next place, you know? And it's not until whenever Robinson shows up that any progressive decisions are ever made. Like, Robinson shows up and he's like, okay, I have to get out of America. Robinson shows up. Um, we need to desert the fucking military. Robinson shows up. <laughs> um, let's kill this old lady and fucking get her money or like whatever. Like when, whenever something happens, it's because it almost feels like it's because Robinson's there. And so, um, when we get to the end of the book, I feel like there's a part of Ferdinand who's either going to feel like completely lost, like he will have no idea what to do with his life for now on, or um, he will finally feel free of the thing that was chasing him, let's say, through the book. Um, so, I mean, it could go either way, but I mean, it ends very kind of abruptly. Like, I feel like there are some lines, a couple paragraphs from the end that would have been good lines to end the book on, but he just keeps going. And that's kind of the fucking book. Like every time when you would think the next scene would happen, he just is fucking going just going and there's so many great lines in this and i'm gonna misquote it because that's how i roll but um one of them was uh i was oh my god what was it sorry sorry guys i was uh, i was as obscene as an unzipped fly and i fucking started cracking up i'm like oh my god that's a fucking good line dude oh 
I like that. I like that a lot. I'm gonna steal it. Um, but steal like an artist, right? Yeah. So there we go. Um, but I don't know. Like, um, I've been talking about this book longer than an episode of The Simpsons. So shit. Um, that's that's what we call um critiquing literature. I guess I'm legit now. So if if you like that kind of shit, give it a go. Um, if you find that kind of shit depressing, don't fucking read it. If, um, but I, I would say, I mean, it's different. It's different than Hunger or The Stranger or Notes from Underground. Um, but I would say, like, read those first because those are easier reads. Those are quicker reads. Um, it's, and because of this, I'm going to try Nausea again by either Sartre or Satra depending on um, what side of the Mississippi you're from. I don't know. So anyway, um, yeah. So let me know if you like this book or if you think it's bullshit or if you think I talk too long. And um, I'm sorry I've been gone so long. I feel like we're just like old chums hanging out now, having a little chit-chat. So I kind of miss that, guys. So um, I will talk to you guys later.